All right, everybody, this is Ross. And you know how they say that the holiday season is the most wonderful time of year? You know, it's the most wonderful time. For me, the most wonderful time of the year is when I'm harvesting the best fruits that I possibly can. And this is really prime persimmon season here in the Philadelphia area. We're a couple days away from Halloween and it's very festive, right? It's very um, timely because we have these orange globes hanging from the trees. But for me, I am uh, going to harvest my Miss Kim tree today. It's an Asian persimmon that we're going to look at that is astringent. And we're going to harvest these because I don't really have enough persimmons off my own trees that I can just give some away to, let's say, the wildlife. And although the wildlife have not really disturbed these trees yet, I don't want to give them a reason. I don't want to lose any of these very valuable fruits that I personally find are my favorite. So we're going to look at the fruit today. We're going to look at the tree a little bit. Right here, actually in front of me, just very quickly, I have a couple Girardi uh, mulberries that I grafted. We're in the front of the house. This is the, uh, really the, um, what is this? The sun rises in the east. So this is the east side of the house. And we have, again, two Girardi mulberries that I grafted. They're dwarf. You can see they grew quite a bit. But when they get a lot of fruit on them, uh, that fruit, that fruit load really slows down their vigor. Once the fruits, you know, you harvest all of them, they're free to grow like a really normal natural persimmon that isn't dwarf, or a, excuse me, a mulberry. We also have a Nikita's Gift here persimmon that I grafted onto Virginiana myself as well. I have a fig actually over here that's really small. We have some yarrow. Um, I have blueberries behind you guys. We have the asparagus over there. And then I'm surrounded in blueberries as well as this giant chay tree here or chi that is uh, probably 15, 20 feet tall at this point. So I'm gonna have to cut that back. And then behind me, you know, pretty much along the edge of the street, that's more visible to everybody that drives by and everyone that's pretty much stopping by on this busy street that we have are the persimmons. And I figured what a great place to plant the persimmons because really no one knows anything about this fruit. They see these fruits or maybe they don't even see them at all because we're, you know, our general population in the United States is so out of touch of nature that they have no idea where their food comes from. So they're never gonna know what this is. I mean, there are some people in the area that do, but I think it's the perfect tree to plant in a busy area because you don't want your neighbors or people driving by to steal your fruits. And you would just imagine people seeing these orange globes hanging from a tree, whether even the tree had lost its leaves or didn't, they're not gonna know what this is and they're probably gonna assume it's poisonous. When in doubt, it's actually really my favorite fruit. So I'm gonna harvest a bunch. I actually have some uh, pruners here. These are short, not um, you know pruners you would use for very thick wood, but maybe you would use these for like your annuals, your garden. Um, I use these on my tomatoes when I clip off the suckers. And then I'm just gonna harvest these guys here into the bowl just by clipping off a little bit of that wood because you'll see at the top, is that we have a little bit of a, I think it's called a calyx. That's how you pronounce it. You can see there's the, um, this is I believe the calyx, this whole thing. And you can see it has four leaves on it. Not really leaves, but four, maybe you could say, petals of the flower. And then here's the wood that attaches to the branch. So you could break it off like I did here, and this one's getting kind of soft. There's even a spot right there that's really kind of soft and maybe I could eat this. Maybe it did lose its astringency. I don't want to really risk it because they should be, you know, a little bit softer than this, but you could harvest them by hand. You could also prune at this time of the year. And I'll even zoom in right over there is a pretty good area of the tree that has about six or seven or eight persimmons that it's set. I'm really happy with this particular tree because it really does tend to set at an early age. The tree, you know, is only about seven, about seven feet tall. It's young, it doesn't get very big. You know, these Asian persimmons, 
uh, tend to stay a bit smaller. Usually their fruit sets high enough at an earlier age, it keeps them a bit smaller. So for me anyway, I think this is a great ornamental tree. Um, I like this particular variety because the fruits are good. They taste like an Asian persimmon. I mean, they really do taste like a good Hychia, which isn't, in my opinion, the best astringent type. But it is very, very precocious. As I said, this tree is not very old. I think I planted this. This probably is its third or fourth year. So at a very young age, this tree is producing well. And every year since I've planted this, it's produced something. The first year I planted it, I got some fruit. Yeah, so this actually is its third year. The second year, it, it produced a lot of fruit, but it did end up dropping them very, very slowly over a course of a few months. Um, so unfortunate that that happened last year. But uh, this year and the first year I planted it, uh, it has done exceptionally well. So this is, a, I think, a very precocious variety. And a lot of these... You know, uh, Jiro types, Fuyu types, although this is, you know, an astringent persimmon, and the Jiro and the Fuyu are not, this is so similar. Um, it is similar in those regards in terms of its precocity. You know, the American persimmon and the hybrids, typically you have to wait seven to ten years before you can really harvest or get a decent harvest off of these trees. Um, now, my Rosianca is in its sixth or seventh year, and I'm finally getting something reasonable. But still, it's not, it has not been great. We only have a few more fruits left on this side of the tree. But for a tree this young, and, you know, it's not like the fruits are so heavy that it's, wearing, it's weighing down the branches either. So for me, this is the perfect amount of fruit sets, good balance. I probably, if I could have, you know, maximized it a little bit more, I would have asked for a little bit more fruits, but the tree does what it's going to do. The tree is going to drop its fruits and the tree is going to decide basically how much it can handle. So I have about in here and I harvested well, over the last couple of weeks, I've been harvesting some a little bit less orange. But over the last few weeks, I have harvested, uh, I want to say about four or five. So altogether, how many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We got about 20 fruits off of this tree. And it's in its third, this is its third season after planting it in the ground. The tree's a little bit older than that, right? I bought the tree grafted uh, from a nursery. I don't remember who I got it from off the top of my head, but that's uh, really respectable. I. Honestly, if I could have hundreds of these fruits, I would. I would peel off the skins right now. And what I could do is peel off the skins. Um, and then I could let them dry or put them in the oven and turn them into a dried persimmon. And they're incredible. Or I could let them soften up on the counter. And these will turn into very, very good fruits either way. But I would love to have hundreds of these so I could dry them into dried persimmons, into hoshigaki, and be able to enjoy these fruits for a longer period of time. Um, although you could have varieties that you harvest at later points of the season, even well into the following year. Here's an idea of the tree. I even came in here actually and staked a bunch of the branches. Not because I thought the branches were too low like this one, and maybe it needed some support, but I wanted to open up the scaffolds of this tree. It really formed these main branches early on last year. And then I decided, because those are the permanent branches, I wanna give them the right angle to get as much sunlight into the center. There is this one branch here and this one branch here, which have grown vertically and perhaps, also this branch, perhaps limited some of that sun in the center. But that was the goal, was to come in here, take off some of those upward shoots and then get this tree to the right form. And as you can see, it's just stunning. It's so ornamental, beautiful, orange globes. No one knows what they are. This is really, in my opinion, 
one of the best fruits. Here's another example. This tree is a uh, similar form. It's younger though. This is a Tam Cam. This is a cold hardy Asian Fuyu type, a, um, non astringent. And you can see the form has really opened itself up. And then next year, this tree will kind of look like the other one that we just saw, the, Tam the uh, Miss Kim. And it should have a lot of fruit. Actually, this tree did have fruit on it. But uh, due to a couple things that went wrong this year, we even broke off a branch by accident in a snowstorm that happened this winter. And uh, so it's getting its act together. And the same thing with this Jiro, which is just as old as this Miss Kim. But this Jiro, for whatever reason, is just, I don't think, nearly as healthy uh, it's just not as I think established or even potentially as precocious as Miss Kim But it'll be there soon and they're gonna stay pretty uh, young or pretty small. I'm sorry not young um, and hopefully they're not going to Compete too much with these blueberries because these blueberries produce a ton of fruit um, And I don't want too much competition. I planted things very close So maybe I'll come in here and I'll cut off of this branch because it's kind of leaning into these blueberries. Overall, as an ornamental landscape you know, design, this is as good as it gets, I think, because you've got, I do have uh, strawberries on the understory. The blueberries get that fiery red color and the wood is typically fiery red. And then the persimmon is just a very ornamental tree in general. Behind it is the giant chi or che tree that uh, I think is also very ornamental. When you can see these leaves that look a lot like the persimmon and they are related to the mulberry, related to the, uh, the fig. And again, these mulberries, very similar situation. So yeah, this is uh, one take, I guess, of one way of doing it. And it, look at all this fruit that I was able to harvest, you know? Ain't better than, nothing better than that. You should have seen the amount of blueberries I got. So we're talking thousands. And uh, I made jam this year. Ate as many as I could possibly eat. I thank you guys for watching. We will see you all soon, all right? Take care. Grow some persimmons. And check out the other videos we've done on this fruit. We'll see you guys for the next one.